Hello and welcome. So this is our first tutorial actually doing some Python. And what we'll be covering is the Python interpreter and what that is. We're going to have a look at expressions, variables, and data types. Now, I encourage you, um, once you've opened Python, to begin with a little bit of an experiment. You see, the Python interpreter is um, in a way symbolized by these three greater than signs that are called a chevron. And you get to write some expressions. And Python actually tells you, no, I don't understand. Hello is not defined. And if I said, hello, my name is Sanyin, it would be invalid syntax. Perhaps Python understands the word is. The rest of it doesn't quite make sense. It's invalid syntax. Otherwise, it kind of tells you uh, not defined. Don't get it. So. In a way, what you already have with idle is a way to try out commands as you learn more Python. Or if you know some other languages, you could try to write some expressions and see what happens. But the type of expressions that you already know that Python understands is some basic maths. 5 plus 5 equals 10. That is an expression. And in theory, an expression is when we do some computation with two or more values and they evaluate to a single value. Now, also worth noting is that Python knows and understands order of operations. So if I go five times five, oh wait, five plus four times three, that should evaluate to five plus 12. We do multiplication first and then addition. And that's how we get 17. If it was the wrong order of operations, and if it just did one operation at a time going left to right, we would have, I don't know, uh, 9 times 3, 27. So Python understands bud mass, and Python can do maths. Now, um, worth noting that there is the time sign. The division sign goes like that. It's this 20 divided by 5. Yeah, we should get 4. So. That is an expression. That's an expression. These are all expressions. The expressions evaluate to a single value. So we covered expressions and values. Now, one algebraic concept that Python understands really well are variables. And, you know, if we, for example, in mathematics had, you know, x plus 5 um, equals 10. Now, we would be able to work out what is x from that. Um, in a way, with computers, they work somewhat differently. We tend to assign values uh, to a variable. So if our variable was x, we could have x equals to whatever, 15. And then we could do operations with x. We could say x plus 4. That evaluates to 19. We could go um, have a bracket, x plus three oops plus three mm, divided by two i don't know that's gonna be yep let's see 15 18 divided by two is going to be nine indeed so and now if i click on if i type in x the value of x has not changed so this is an example of how we can use variables in python now, x could store text as well. It doesn't have to store um, just numbers. So if we have a variable, maybe we can, we can just call it name equals to Sanyin. So this is typically, you know, um, what you would think of if we were doing maths. And Python nearly understands that. All you need to do is put text inside quotation marks. And putting it in, into a quotation mark does something as uh, that's very important for computers. It designates the data type to be a string. Now, a string is text. And as text, it, it's it, you can think of it as a symbol. So if I type in name equals the, so if I just type in name, it should say my name. So uh, let me illustrate what I mean by text. So if, if instead of x equals 15, we wrote x 
equals to quotation marks 15. Okay. Sorry. We could not do this then, x plus 5. This would not work because um, a string is simply text. Now, x is like a picture, the text 15. You cannot do math with a picture. You can do math with a value. So, interestingly though, um, you could do this. If you have two strings, so two bits of text, you can add them together. So you could go name plus x. So it's going to be Sunyan plus 15. There you go. We have um, two strings added together. Now, one thing that you could do as an experiment, you could go type x and it's going to say class str. So that means that's a string. Um, if we had another one, for example, y equals to 26, and then we could type in type y, that's an int. An int is a round number. It's an integer. But if we had another one, perhaps, uh, I don't know, g equals to 23, now g would also be an int, but but if we introduce a brand new one that says q equals to I don't know y over g. So q is now going to be some decimal number. If we type in q, there we go. And if we go type q, that is class float. So int is essentially round numbers floats are decimal uh, numbers with decimal points so uh, in a way as far as computers are concerned they differentiate between one and the other because ints can be stored in much less memory and then floats can be stored in, in bits of space that contain more memory so that should cover it so just to reiterate everything we talked about python interpreter this triple line that translates whatever we type into a form that Python can understand. Alternatively, it gives us error messages when Python does not understand. Expressions. So expressions are um, two or more values evaluating to something. So if these two values are strings, name plus x, they evaluate to sign in 15. They could also be numbers. So, um, you know, like we did over here, x plus 3 divided by 2, 20 divided by 5. All of these are expressions that evaluate. Um, next up, we have variables. Well, x, q, y, all of these are variables. So there are a name under which we can store a particular value. And finally, data types. So as far as um, we're going to cover in the Python Fundamentals course, we're only going to deal with strings, which are text. We're going to deal with int or integers, which are um, round numbers and floats, which are numbers that contain decimals. So that's it for now. See you in the next tutorial. All right, you got to the end and you may be wondering where can you get the file or a PDF document of the same tutorial? Don't worry, the link is right under the video, which will take you to this page. The whole Python Fundamentals course, it is free. And you enroll, you enter, I don't know, we can, I created a, a Gmail account, aussiejoeblow at gmail.com. Got a password. And agree to the term, sign up. It could be this easy, I think. And there you are. In pick a tutorial. It'll see the same you'll see the same tutorial as it is on YouTube, and you will have a PDF document that goes with and a downloadable file. So enjoy that and see you later. All right, you got to the end and you may be wondering where can you get the file or a PDF document of the same tutorial. Don't worry, the link is right under the video, which will take you to this page. The whole Python Fundamentals course, it is free.
and you enroll you enter I don't know we can I created a, a gmail account aussiejoeblow at gmail.com got a password and agree to the term sign up it could be this easy I think and there you are in pick a tutorial it'll see the same you'll see the same tutorial as it is on YouTube and you will have a PDF document that goes with and a downloadable file so enjoy that and see you later